Good morning. We are in the home stretch of this term paper assignment, and I need to address some issues with you before you submit your final draft um, so that you can have the best paper that you possibly can. So the first thing that you need to know, if you'll look at the instructions on the term paper, your term paper must show revision from the rough draft. If you turn in the same paper that you already have turned in as your rough draft, you will receive a zero. Um, you're, you have to show significant attempt at revision on your term paper to get credit for it, okay? Because I have spent time reviewing all of the, the drafts. Um, writing is a process. You have to show that you can go from, from rough draft to final draft, that you can revise on your own. And so that's part of it. And I'll, I'll remind you that the term paper is required for, to pass this class. So make sure that you, um, you know, do the work. Okay, so after reviewing most of the drafts in the class, I have gone um, and created a document that just shows some of the, um, the different issues that have arisen. If I can get it to come up. Okay, so this uh, document is provided for you here. It's linked, and I just want to go over a couple of these things um, on video, and um, then you can take the time to look at it. First of all, Ideally, this paper would be in third-person point of view. Your sample paper is in third-person point of view. Academic writing is generally in third-person point of view. I will allow first-person point of view, but that does not mean you should be referring to yourself, you know, really. I mean, don't say, I chose to interview or I did this. If you, if you talk about the general us and we, that's fine. If you slip in an I here and there, that's fine. But do not refer to yourself or the reading that you've done or the research you've conducted. Take yourself out of it. Um, do not announce what you're doing in the paper. Um, you know, for instance, this paper will address or anything like that. You're, stop announcing. Just do it. Um, your formatting should be uh, normal MLA, and then make sure that you are following the guidelines that are in the instructions for how to do subheadings and sub subheadings. And then, if it, you are writing your paper and one of your subheadings or sub subheadings appears at the bottom, hit enter to get to the next page. I don't know where this rule got lost in typing classes, but you should always have at least two full lines of text at the bottom of any page. And so if you don't have two full lines of text, if all you have is a header or a title or something like that, you need to, to hit enter to get it to the next page. Um, when you are citing your sources, you are to use page numbers if your source has page numbers. So we're talking about journal articles or a page from a newspaper. Use the page numbers in those um, instances. However, if it's a web source and most of your sources are, they don't have page numbers. It doesn't matter how many, how, how many pages you printed and at the bottom it says one of four or two of four. Those are not actual page numbers because depending on your printer settings, um, the page numbers would be different. So if it has actual page numbers that appear in the works cited entry, you need to use those when you are citing specific information. Um, otherwise, don't use them at all. And remember, there are two different ways to cite a source. You can cite the author or the um, article name, if there's no author, within the sentence. Okay, so John Smith states, resilience can be developed over time. If that source has a page number, then you put it here period goes after the parentheses. Um, you could also do it a different way. According to the article, comma, resilience can be developed, developed over time. Smith 34. So a um, couple different ways. But you guys have been studying all of this all semester. I don't understand how we're missing some of this. Open your textbook, a writer's reference. Open it up and study up on how to do this properly. Um, I cannot believe that at this point in the semester, I have more than half of you using Y-O-U in an academic essay. Don't do it. I will promise you, there's no chance of you making an A if you want to put this word all through your essay. Um, the only way you can use it is if you direct quote. Also, the word thing is being overused too much. It is so vague, so bland. Revise your work to get rid of the use of these words. Um, also, another huge issue that is coming up is that pronouns are not agreeing with antecedents. 
this is an English class. This is not uh, for Facebook writing or whatever. So we're going to use actual grammar rules in this class. Child, person, everyone, those are all singular. So you can't put everyone in a sentence and then go back and call them they because that's plural. Don't mix them. Um, if you don't like the way everyone and his or her sounds, then revise your sentence that you don't need those. Okay, so there's different ways that you can revise to get rid of this pronoun antecedent issue. Um, make sure that your sentences are structured properly and that if you are using like list of items, um, that they are parallel in nature. Uh, when you quote we, that means you're, you're including a quote as part of your sentence. The whole sentence has to be grammatical. So reading aloud is going to help you catch this. This means that you might have to change a word or two in the original quote, and you have to use brackets when you do that. But make sure that the whole sentence makes sense. Um, when you are using sources, your paper, yes, it's a literature review, but what you should have done in your literature review is read over several sources, and you kind of come up with this idea of, you know, what these sources have in common and what they're all saying. And then you select the points you want to focus on and you use source information to support what you are saying, okay? Um, so make sure that you are using sources to support and that the sort, whatever quote or source information you drop into a paragraph and it needs to make sense, the sentences before it and after it should make sense and don't just introduce source material at the end of a paragraph because source material needs explanation, okay? So make sure that you've explained it properly. Connected to that is the fact that your paragraph should be focused. There should not be several ideas in one paragraph. All the sentences should connect and make sense. All the sentences should be valuable. Each sentence in, this, in the paragraph should contribute to the paper, okay? Some sentences are vague and unneeded, so make sure that all sentences are, are needed. Um, whenever you do your interviews, make sure that you are presenting them in the order that you have introduced them. So I've seen a few examples of, I introduced dad, mom, and grandma, and then the first person you talk about is grandma. No, make sure that the way you introduce them um, is the way that you present them in the essay. Also, when you're talking about family members, remember the little rule that if you put my in front of it, the name isn't capitalized, but if you just call the name by itself, it is. So my grandpa versus grandpa. So the whole paper, even though we did this in parts, it is still supposed to all be connected and all make sense. You should start with one basic idea in your very first paragraph, and that should be the, the idea that you end with through literature review and through interviews. So make sure that you are tying all of this together, okay? That the ideas that you pulled from your interviews are connected to the ones that you also pulled from the literature. Another problem that a few of you were doing, yes, there are little introduction paragraphs and conclusion paragraphs within those two sections of the paper, but we don't want to use the word conclusion because there's only one actual conclusion. It's one paper now, okay? Yes, you're going to have a little paragraph that, that gets the literature review part going and one that wraps it up, and then you're going to have a little uh, paragraph that gets the interviews going and one that wraps it up. But those are just parts of those sections. You only have one official introduction paragraph and one official conclusion paragraph. So watch the language you are using. It needs to make sense. The whole paper should be only be about five pages. Some of yours are longer. It is okay if they're longer as long as it, it's all new information. So if you're repeating yourselves a lot, don't. That's why it's so important to read your essay aloud to catch that repetition. Don't repeat yourself. Um, you need, at this point in the semester, you should have a handle on punctuation and grammatical errors. I, I suspect that um, most of you, many of you are not reading the feedback that I've given you, and you're not studying to fix these errors. Um, it is time to do that. It's the end of the semester. Um, your essays should be, should be f decent when it comes to punctuation and, and grammar, especially because we have been going over these all semester. Um, if you're still making the same mistakes, you write an essay one, that is a huge problem and a red flag that says that you may not be ready for comp two. So make sure that you are attending to any punctuation grammar errors 
when I gave you back your drafts, you have a lot of highlighting going on. That means there's a problem in that area. Figure out what it is. And I've already said this several times, but I can't reiterate it enough. Read your essay aloud. Get alone. Read your essay aloud and read it several times. And before you submit it, read it aloud one more time to make sure that it all makes sense. We tend to skim words. We skip over words. And so it's so easy for us to not catch errors. So you need to be mindful of this and read aloud to catch errors. I have included in this document your essay error codes one more time. And this time I highlighted the sections in a writer's reference to help you remember where these sections are. If you had codes uh, in your previous uh, essays here, go check them out. Um, I'm still seeing a lot of comma splices. I'm seeing some run-on sentences. I'm seeing a lot of comma errors still. It goes without saying that I'm seeing a lot of the YOU um, formatting issues, uh, documenting properly. So, you know, really for sure make sure that you've studied the MLA section. Make sure you've studied the comma section. Uh, the G section is also good. Make sure you've studied over these and that you take responsibility for your paper. You've had ample time. We've built, we've pieced this together little by little and some of the sources you've had all semester. So um, there's really no excuse here. I've given you a couple extra days. Make sure that you submit the best essay possible. I will follow up with one more video.